but can it run Linux? This question is asked of every device that even vaguely resembles a computer, and today I hope to answer it for the venerable NES. But to do that, I'll first need to address whether or not something should be considered to be running on an NES. Because I could take a cartridge, throw a Raspberry Pi in it, and run basically anything I want. That trick has been done before, to run Super Nintendo games and even Doom on the NES. Those projects are cool, but they treat the NES less like its own independent system, and more like a shitty video card. What I want is all of the operating system's code running directly on the NES's processor, with no more hardware than can be found in a contemporary game cartridge. Now, even the most lightweight Linux distros would struggle to run under the constraints of the NES, so instead of trying to run Linux, we'll try to run Linux. You see, I've heard people refer to things like BSD and macOS as Linux, as a shorthand for a Unix-like operating system, with some GNU utility sprinkled on top. And that's more in line with what I hope to achieve. Of course, that raises a whole new question. What is a Unix-like operating system? For the purposes of this project, I'll consider an operating system to be Unix-like if it creates a clear separation between user space code and kernel space code, where kernel space code is responsible for managing the hardware and abstracting it into a series of system calls that user space code can use to request that the kernel perform some hardware operation on its behalf. A Unix-like system should also support time sharing through preemptive multitasking. That is, allowing multiple processes to share execution time on the same CPU by interrupting the current process and swapping it out with a different one at the kernel's discretion. Lastly, a Unix-like system should support a hierarchical file system consisting of a root directory, subdirectories, and files, like you're probably familiar with. Now it hasn't escaped me that Windows falls into this description of Unix-like, so I'm going to add a bonus criteria that requires a Unix-like system to feel like Unix. That includes things like following the Unix philosophy, using forward slashes and paths, and having a shell that doesn't suck harder than a black hole. Now I want to write a Unix kernel as much as the next guy, but it seems like a good idea to check if someone else has already done all the hard work. And sure enough, one web search later we find Little Unix. This is a broadly portable Unix-like operating system that was originally written for the Commodore 64. Development seems to have been abandoned about 20 years ago, but it meets all of our requirements, and it's a pretty good starting point since the Commodore 64 is architecturally similar to the NES. How similar? Well, the Commodore 64 has, fittingly, 64 kilobytes of RAM, a fully 6502 compatible CPU, a video chip that supports 40 column text, and a couple of dedicated interrupt timers, plus a built-in keyboard and a variety of ways to load software. Meanwhile, the NES has a whole 2 kilobytes of RAM and another 2 kilobytes of video RAM, a mostly 6502 compatible CPU, a video chip that supports 32 column text, more or less, and an audio processor that could be repurposed as an interrupt timer, plus controller ports and software released exclusively on cartridges. The differences between these systems do cause a few problems, not the least of which is RAM. Since Little Unix expects to be loaded into RAM and takes up about 12 kilobytes all on its own, this immediately blows our system specs out of the water. Of course, we could create a cartridge that provides more RAM, and while we're at it, wire up a keyboard to the controller ports, and even add a disk drive for good measure. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Or we could just use a Japanese Famicom, which is functionally identical to the NES, and had all of those things sold as commercial accessories. The Famicom disk system gives us an extra 32 kilobytes of RAM, a dedicated interrupt timer, and access to a floppy disk that can store 64 kilobytes per side. So now that we're done moving the goalposts, we can start porting Unix to the Famicom disk system. It should be a simple matter of defining a new memory map and writing some system initialization code, but little Unix makes a few assumptions about the system's hardware that don't hold true on the Famicom. You see, the system's memory map looks like this, with 2 kilobytes of RAM starting at address 0, followed by some memory mapped registers and otherwise unusable addresses, then there's another 32 kilobytes of cartridge RAM, and lastly, 8 kilobytes of ROM that holds the disk system's BIOS. Little Unix is hard-coded to run right here, in the middle of this unusable address space, and it expects to be able to write system data to the last page of memory, which is mapped to read-only memory. Since we can't change the system's memory map, the kernel will have to be patched to run here, in cartridge RAM, and write its system data to the highest writable page. That's enough to get the kernel running, but it's not exactly usable. At a minimum, the system still needs a keyboard driver and a console driver to display text. 
Thankfully, the NES dev community has thoroughly documented the Family Basic keyboard and the picture processing unit, so writing those drivers is a relatively easy task. With those written, we can actually interact with the system, but it still can't do a whole lot. This is just the system's init process, and its main purpose is to load a proper shell, but it can't do that without a disk driver. This one is more difficult than the other drivers, since little Unix needs to be able to access any random byte on the disk, and the disk system simply wasn't designed for that. Unlike most disk drives that split disks into tracks and sectors that can be accessed quickly and randomly, the Famicom disk system just keeps reading in one long, continuous, unbroken spiral moving from file to file. Because of this, we can't leverage the disk routines provided by the BIOS that read an entire file into memory, and instead have to write our own routines that read one arbitrary byte at a time. Unfortunately, the Famicom Disk System's documentation is a little sparse in places, but with the help of the FDS technical reference and some reverse engineering of my own, I managed to get to grips with the Disk System's hardware well enough to cobble together a disk driver. The driver treats the disk as read-only, since the Disk System's native format isn't well suited to writing files in the way that Unix does. But it's good enough to get a shell running. All of the programs are loaded from the disk as needed, and if this were real hardware we could swap between different disks at runtime. The system is pretty full featured now. We can use virtual consoles to launch a second shell. This makes it easy to run multiple programs in parallel. The shell even supports things like the command history and inter-process communication through pipes. Just to be completely transparent, I'd like to note that I've configured the emulator to run at 1000% speed when accessing the disk, and I've edited this footage down a bit. Disk access is definitely the bottleneck of the system, and performance could certainly be improved with a larger disk cache. In fact, there are plenty of improvements that can be made to the system, like adding support for a read-write partition, making the screen stop glitching like a ZX80, and porting the networking module. But that's all beside the point. The point is that you can indeed run Unix on a Famicom. Actually, let's take this one step further. I've got an EverDrive that supports disk system ROMs, so let's see if this runs on real hardware. And there you have it, Unix running on unmodified NES hardware. Now, I don't have a keyboard to test this with, but it at least demonstrates that the kernel is running. And I think this is where I'll leave this project for now. If this interests you, then I encourage you to go check out the source code for yourself and consider contributing to it. Little Unix is an impressive piece of software that deserves much more attention than it's received. This video has just been a high-level overview of what it can do, and some of what it took to get it running on the NES. Before we finish, I'd like to give a quick shout-out to Inkbox for inspiring this project with his graphical operating system for the NES and also to Brian Kernigan for his book Unix, A History and a Memoir, which also inspired this project. Thanks for watching. My people work themselves into extinction converting an NES into a Unix system. Why would you do all that? Because it's cool.